Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are welcome. The prophecy that you are about to hear is called Breaking Waters as Birth Pains. Thus says the Lord, part two. I just completed an unanticipated part one, the Lord coming on the line to speak many things that were not captured in writing. So those things have been uploaded as breaking waters as birth pains, thus says the Lord, part one. Both prophecies are dated October the 28th, 2024. The Lord just letting loose on his heart. I was about to handle another prophecy that is entitled headwinds from, I think it's May, 2021 going through the blog to cover my footsteps and see that every prophecy has been turned into a video. And then the Lord began to speak over, as I prepared myself for that prophecy, the Lord began to speak over um, my preparation. And so I knew that he was giving a message. And so I wrote these things down. This is now the written part of what the Lord said that I captured. And so the banner scripture that we're going to look at, there are two banner scriptures. The first one is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 24 verse 8 is one of the most well-known apocalyptic chapters of the Bible. This chapter seems to stand out quite graphically in the midst of all the other chapters because Matthew is talking about his account of Jesus Christ, what he knew of Christ, what he saw of Christ, what he experienced of Christ as a faithful member of Jesus's ministry team. And then all of a sudden you find the disciples asking Jesus, please tell us um, what will be the signs of your coming? How will we know that the end of the age is near? And then Jesus answers them, and right at the beginning, the scripture I'm going to look at is verse 8. He tells them that there's going to be people coming in his name and saying that they're the Christ. They will come and say that they're the Christ. They will deceive many. He tells them that they're going to hear wars, rumors of wars. He said, don't be troubled by these things because all these things have to happen, but the end is not yet. So the end is going to be part of a long extended period of events. And Jesus is giving them inklings of what to expect. He says that nation is going to rise against nation and kingdom will come against kingdom. And you're going to see famines. You're going to see pestilences. This is plagues, the outbreak of a pestilence, of a, of a plague. You might look at the scope of that and at what we recently called a pandemic, something that is very, very widespread, even though it may not cover the whole earth as it did before. And then he says, you'll see earthquakes in various places. And then he says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. In some places, some um, Bibles, they say, all these are the beginning of birth pains. So birth pains are a signaling that we are going into a certain time period. And that is the arrival of a little one. Birth pains are associated with the coming of new life into the earth. And so when the disciples are asking Jesus, and he's giving them pointers. The first set of pointers is speaking to unrest, kingdom to kingdom. This is unrest in the affairs of men. Unrest such as political unrest, wars, because that's what nation against nation means, and also unrest in the earth itself, natural disasters. He mentions famines, he mentions earthquakes, he mentions pestilences. These are large scale troublings of the earth. And then he says these things mark the beginning of the birth pains. In other words, you will know that we are entering into the time period where we are expecting the birth of someone when you see these things. And so that's the first scripture. Remember the prophecy is called breaking waters as birth pains. And when a person is about to go into labor, one of the first signs that she's ready is that her water breaks. The next scripture is from the book of Thessalonians. It is one Thessalonians. And if you have your Bible, you can go along there, or you can just allow me to read it to you. And it says, for when they say peace and, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. So again, it's talking about birth pains. It's talking about labor pains, how labor pains suddenly can fall upon a woman 
without her consent, obviously, and she has no control over them. And when they start, they do not stop until they culminate in the birth of someone. So labor pains are a clear example that someone is on the way, someone expected, someone anticipated, and once they begin, they do not abate. They are notorious for increasing in frequency and increasing in violence, increasing in great pains, which is why they usually say a woman is in the grip of labor, labor pains because once it gets a hold of you, doesn't let go of her until the baby comes. And it's saying here that at the very moment that men and women or leaders or people are promoting ideals that will make people feel very comfortable for that is what peace and safety is. It is a kind of ideology that says we've never been this secure. We've never had this much good intelligence when it comes to espionage. We have the best spies we've ever had. We have the best missile defense systems that we've ever had. We've got the best and most highly developed air aircraft carriers and aircraft fleets and Navy fleets and the best weapons that we've ever had. We're at the pinnacle of our development. We expect to still grow, but in terms of growth, we've grown to the best we've ever had. The Lord says that when that kind of talk, when that kind of ideology, when that kind of symbology, when that kind of approach is at its peak in the earth, that is when destruction is going to fall and suddenly grip the earth, grip the peoples. And so both of these clearly relate to the onset of the end times. And that is what the Lord is showing. And so this is how the Lord came in. I said, I was looking at another prophecy. I was looking at the prophecy, getting ready to make that one. And then this is how I just started to hear the Lord's voice. And he was just telling me America as a leader is finished. You hear me? Do you hear me? America as a leader is finished. And so I took my pen and I started to write America as a leader is finished. You hear me? America as a head is finished. She's over. She's coming down and coming down fast. The end of the United States is with fighting. Do you hear me? It's with being cornered like an animal on all sides and being desperate. It's with fighting like when you're fighting for your life like cats in an alley when one has been cornered and all the other ones surround it and it's fighting for its life while they attack from every side. That's the kind of ending America will have. They'll be staggering in the street, trying to fight back and they won't be able. They won't be able to meet the might of the Russian army and the Chinese will also surround them. This country will go out with a whimper and not with a bang. It's long been assumed because of movies and generalized propaganda that if anything happens, America will go out like a hero, guns blazing. But I tell you now, if you can believe it, America will go out with a whimper and not with a bang, not with a last stand like General Custer. No, she will die with a look of surprise on her face out of pure shock that she could ever be touched by another nation or beaten in the game of war. Thus says the Lord, your Goliath will revenge on you and you will lose the contest because the grace of God has left you and will not return at all. And so the Lord was just conversationally telling me, this country's finished, Celestial. You hear me? And of course I hear him. I thank God that my ears are not only open, but they're attentive. There are many people, their ears can be open to God, but they're not attentive. Attentiveness means that you are listening, paying attention and believing what God is saying. But if God is saying something and you're just, oh, I don't know who is speaking to me. I, I don't know what that was. Then it's not exactly attentiveness because attentiveness means that you're locked in and you're saying with your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, God, you have my attention. I'm listening. I can hear you. And so he was saying, you hear me just euphemistically the way our mother says, I don't want to see those dirty dishes in the sink when I come back. You hear me? Of course we hear her because the risk of leaving them in the sink is not worth it for the temper that she will be in if she comes back and find that you've disobeyed her. America is finished as a world leader. You hear me? Yes, Lord, I hear you. America as a head 
is finished. America's not going to head anything. America's not going to be the premier anymore. Premier means the first, the leader, the innovator, the one that everybody wants to copy, the one that everyone wants to emulate, the one that everybody says, oh, I wish I could go there. I wish I was an American. When you see people starting to leave this country like rats fleeing a, a sinking ship, who do you think is going to be applying for a visa to come to a country where people are going to be committing open sodomy in the street? Who wants to see that when you can go and look at the Eiffel Tower or go anywhere else or just stay in your own country and say, well, I'm glad we don't have that yet. As a world leader, as an icon, as an influencer, as a TikTok girly, America will no longer be that girl. She will no longer be the baddie, the one that everybody wants to get with, the most beautiful girl in the room. God will start to expose the underbelly of the nation, which I have been doing diligently here for the last five years. But not only that, you see, we're going to move into a place where it's not just celestial said. You're going to see it for yourself. You're going to see it in your neighborhoods. You're going to see it in the school policies. You're going to see it in the outright porn that your children are going to bring home and say, oh, the school told us this was sex ed. And your children, some of them, they're still innocent. They're still decent kids. They have absolutely no idea that it's wrong to come home with graphic pictures of two men doing the act in little part one, part two, part three uh, cartoon shape. And so too late for you, the teacher will go over all that material in class and then give him, them the take home paper cutouts. And by the time you see it and blow your top, it's too late. Your child has been introduced to homosexuality. You can't put the horse back in the barn because the horse already ran away when your child was learning about anal sodomy in class. A few years ago, this would have been completely off the cuff when I was talking about this kind of thing. Oh, the outrage. Oh, the to 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 And now here we are. School town halls. Fathers are reading from the porn books that the children have brought home as required reading. It's no longer war and peace. It's no longer mice and men. The children are reading absolute LGBTQ X rated fiction, but specifically written for children by the budding state funded writers on the left. And so there you have it. America's coming down. Anybody who's bringing that kind of filth into the young who are the building blocks of the future, you know you're not going to be leading anything because as I've said in one of the old prophecies, God gave me a vision of India. God gave me a vision of China. God gave me a vision of Russia. God showed me those three societies and he was showing that the men actually like women. The men like women. The men marry women and that is how they build strong families and that is why their populations are massive and this one is declining and sinking to the bottom of the pond like a rock. You can't get new babies out of men going with men. Men who like Birkins are never going to be good fathers no matter what. Their fake peer-reviewed studies, their curated studies try to tell us it is unnatural behavior. It will never be sanctioned by God. If a society exists and God is not sanctioning you, there's no success in that society. Everything you try will simply implode and fall down as dust. So God is saying ahead of time, from the place where he's already seen it happen, that America is over and that she's plummeting fast. And he says, America will end with fighting. So America is going to come down as this nation declines. We are going to go into endless conflicts with other nations. It is not going to be a case of Israel is doing this and we're backing them up and nobody says anything. Now, whatever Israel is doing, they're doing in the bright spotlight. Everybody's eyes is on them. Everybody can see them now for who they are. And America, too late, is trying to distance herself from over 60 years of ingrained Israel can do no wrong policy. You touch Israel, you touch us. All of a sudden now it's, well, we're seeking, we're seeking uh, understanding and we're seeking to really evaluate what to do. And you cannot distance yourself from all the things that have been done. You will have to pay the price for those things. And so what I saw, what God says is that the, America's gonna go down fighting. Do you hear me? America's gonna go down being cornered like an animal fighting for its life, desperate and fighting like a cornered animal, like alley cats who corner one cat and begin to attack it as that cat is fighting for their life. And what I saw is, I saw a really big ginger, okay? A ginger cat. You might call it lore, or you might just call it the, the knowledge of cat lovers, but I saw a very big ginger cat, and everybody says that ginger cats are just wild and sassy. They just like to fight. They're just the big dogs of the streets, you know? 
a ginger will come and go as he pleases, you know, and that's what people say about cats. I wouldn't know. But I saw this really big ginger who had been standing on top of the trash can, right? So the cats were in an alley and apparently earlier before my eye got there, the ginger had been standing on top of the trash can with the lid on top and lording over some other cats that were at the bottom. But then all of a sudden, the cats began to appear on the roof, okay? So there was a building right next, they were in an alley and the building there, cats started to appear on the roof and cats also started to appear on the wall, alley and building on the inside. So cats started appearing all along that sloping roof, looking down into the alley. Cats appeared at the top of the wall, cats started coming all over and the cats started to swat at this ginger. Cats at the bottom started to hit at the trash can. So they were bumping the trash can in an attempt to get the trash can to fall so that the ginger cat would fall off so that they could tear him to pieces. And the cats along the wall were reaching down and bopping the ginger on his head. So they were reaching down and giving him swats. Some of them, their arms were too short to reach. That's obviously the, the nations like, I don't know, Belarus, nations like... Haiti, Guyana, what are you going to do to America? Absolutely nothing. But there were nations, bigger cats, black tabby cats, all black, one white paw, that kind of cat. And they could reach the ginger and they were giving him some solid whacks on the top of his head, okay? They were messing up his fur and everything like that. And the pedestal is shaking, the bottom cats are you know, those are the nations that are small. That, that's the whole of Africa that I, I always wonder what, what you're doing in American business. What? So that's the whole of Africa having its uprising, starting to say the things they say, starting to really sense their own power, starting to undergo their own revolutions, their own changes for the entire global order is changing, hitting against the bottom, Latin America, hitting against the bottom of the trash can in an attempt to overthrow the ginger. So he's dealing with the shaking pedestal that he's sitting on. And then from the top, there's spectators going Row! from the top. They're watching, they're giving their voice to it. And then cats along the wall are reaching out and hitting this ginger, hitting him in his head. And so he's beleaguered from all sides. And this cat became visibly upset. Like all his fur stood up like an electric wire had touched him. He was so enraged but he couldn't handle the onslaughts from everywhere. And the way that the Lord cut off that vision is that the garbage can was tipping. It was tipping and the lid also had started to slide off and the ginger had his claws locked into the lid, keeping one paw free to try and hit back at the ones who were hitting him, but they were not. And there was one particular cat, a big black cat with one white paw. And that cat was poised to leap on the ginger as he was falling. He was poised to leap and tackle him right in the chest and take him down. And I knew that once that cat lost the security of the garbage can, America, do you see that God didn't put you on top of a fountain? He put you on top of a trash can. Then you say that the visions I see, I'm making them up and I'm copying them from the internet. How sway. But anyway, the trash can was leaning, the lid was sliding off, leverage was being lost, and I saw the big black cat that had been getting the most bops, the most hits in. That cat now crouched. And he was watching for a moment. And I saw that if he launches, he's going to hit the ginger right in the chest. The two of them are going to go down. The momentum is going to be on the black cat's side. And on top of that, there's a sea of angry, enraged cats. And they're going to just rip the fur off of the ginger one. And so that's what God says. America, your end is going to be like a cornered animal going down, desperate and fighting for its life like cats in an alley that have cornered one cat and they're going to attack it from every side. That's the kind of ending you will have. And then God says, they'll be staggering in the street, trying to fight back and they won't be able, they won't be able to meet the might of the Russian army and the Chinese will always, will also surround them as the country goes out with a whimper and not a bang. Going out with a whimper and not a bang is a euphemism that says that you think from the way that somebody talks, right? From the bravado, from the we, we believe in international cooperation, but we will answer aggression and we will answer the question and we will answer all the test scores. 
We'll answer when you call. All that talk makes you think that somebody's going to get out there and say it with his chest. But then what happens is I saw a scene exactly like 9-11, okay? So I saw dust rising up. I saw dust rising up either from an explosion or a building collapse of some kind. And a firefighter was in the process of dying. He was still on his feet. It was a firefighter and it was a policeman, okay? A uh, policeman in blue, probably New York City, but also a firefighter who, who either had taken off his helmet or he had lost his helmet. The firefighter was in the process of dying. Something had happened and hurt the man at his back. I couldn't see his back, but because of the way he was staggering and the blood coming out, I knew that man is dying. But the policeman was just dazed. Either something had blown up, something really big had blown up, an explosion, something. The policeman was dazed and both of them was covered in the same kind of dust that came from 9-11 massive explosion or an attack an aerial raid something had happened the firefighter had been hit by it and he was dying the policeman was dazed and had no idea his ears were ringing he was experiencing that shock you know in the movie when it's like and the sound is distorted that's what he was experiencing and both men were kind of drunken and weaving because of the impact and God was showing me this is how Russia is going to hit America so hard that they will be as if they are drunk. And who's going to be providing ground support, air support, camel support, underground support, coming out of the sea support? It's China. I told you that China is going to be like a large crab. I saw a large red crab run up on America. This vision is years old. And the crab squeezed America from both sides. East coast, west coast. And America began to send out pain signals, little lightning bolts, this is the pain signals to show that the nation was in pain and that crab was squeezing with massive pincers. And so whatever Russia is, is planning, whatever Russia is organizing, China is there like, listen, we got you on manpower. You just draw up the blueprint and our boys will execute. We have the warm bodies. So you come up with the plan, you send it to us on Twitter, and we have got the manpower. China's going to see to it that in the boxing match, America's not getting out. So when that black tabby leaps, China's going to make sure that it's a closed match. NATO will not come near. Nobody's coming near to say we strongly protest. You will be strongly protest, protesting from the safety of Lyon and Paris and Luxembourg and Berlin. And you can protest from there. And God says that is fine. But remember that God says any nation that raises its hand to assist America in the day of her calamity, whatever is going down in America at that time, Russia will give you the same dose, guaranteed hands down. So that is, that is what is it. America will not be able to sustain the Russian blow. Remember, it's coming at a time that we do not expect. It's going to be sudden. Russia has sleeper agents in the country. China has sleeper agents in the country. They are so sleeper agents. They are born here, okay? Some of them are born here. Some of them, God says, they came over in the 70s and the 80s and that he says it was a master plan. These people have lived here. Some of them still have their accents, but then again, if Boris has lived here all his life as the owner of the corner store, 40 years, this man has been selling you grilled cheese. Why would you ever think he's a sleeper agent? 60 years, Professor Wang has been teaching American cultural studies with a flawless American Berkeley accent. Would we, why would you ever think that's a sleeper agent? So the goose is already cooked and it's just a matter of carving and serving. And God says that the movies have led Americans into thinking that they're braver than they are. He says, because of the movies and the general propaganda, you've watched Rocky, you've watched, who's this man? Bruce Willis, Die Hard, part one, part two, part three. You've watched Samuel L. Jackson. You've watched Ryan Gosling, who is a woman transformed into action heroes. You've seen these things. You have seen both beautiful men and beautiful women portray guns blazing heroes. And so this thing has trickled into the general psyche that people are braver than they actually are. And so God says that people really believe that America has the mental strength to come out guns blazing um, in any wartime conflict, but that is not the case. 
he says America will go out whimpering, which is just the people crying and the people saying, what is the government doing? And the people saying, where is God? And the people saying all the things that you know we say. If there's even a power cut, we say those things. If FEMA doesn't come, we say those things. And so when a war comes, what do you think we're going to say? We're going to say what we always say. What have we done to deserve this? And where is God? So America will die with a shocked look. And that shock will come out of the surprise that she could be outmanned, the surprise that she could be outgunned, the surprise that there could ever be a sleeper agent plan in the first place. How can a nation that believes itself so secure, watch this old message, you can read it on the blog, it's coming to mind, it's called Enemy at the Gates. In that prophecy, God asked like 10 questions in succession. Are you sure you're safe? Are your gates secure? Are your soldiers loyal? Are this and that? Are you unhackable? He was asking so many questions. And if the answer to all those questions is no, then America is not unhackable. That means that the Russians have already hacked. God says that Americans give away personal information because they're constantly downloading Chinese games. And the Chinese games, oh, jump across the moat, oh, grow this flower, nurture this dragon. And when you sign in, it tiny print, third-party apps, third-party apps. You sign in, you sign in with your email in the Google Play Store, the Apple Store, and then that email is easily traced back to Mr. Johnson Brown, uh, father of two children, married to Malia Brown, and everything is just a cakewalk from there. Social security numbers, where you prefer to go um, for recreation, your Facebook pages, where you live, you're standing outside your house, they Google map it, Google earth it. And so, Back building American identity is not hard because it's it's so out there as a rule. And so um, that is what the Lord says here. The shock will come not from the fact that it's a war, but it's a war on us, on our so soil at a time we didn't see coming, that any other nation would be bold enough to make this move. But Russia and China are no slouches in the area of boldness. They're just quieter. They don't use bravado. They use something far more deadly. They use stealth and the deadliest weapon of all, patience. And so God says, Goliath will revenge on you and you will lose the contest because the grace of God has left you and will not return at all. You can look at the prophecy, no more grace for that. God saying that he will have no more grace on America. We hear the prophecy, we cry out, we say, God, it's too much. The cost is too high. It's too scary. Have mercy. And this will be a prophecy from the 1940s. God will have mercy. And then the people will respond by having the sexual revolution. They will respond by creating the pill. Uh, they will respond by um, Woodstock getting high on every type of LSD and drug. They will respond by going into an era of sin. And then another person will stand up and say, thus says the Lord, long before my birth, Thus says the Lord, this and that and that. And then the people will cry out and say, oh God, our punishment is too great. Like Cain, I cannot bear it. And then the Lord will relent and then they will respond by Roe versus Wade. They will respond by, I don't know, CIA experiments. They will respond by going into countries all around the world and assassinating every president that they could get their hand on. And then they will come and they will say, judgment is at the gates and then the people will cry and say, our punishment is too great. And so it's been a repetitive cycle. And God, knowing the hearts of the people and that we are headed into Revelation 18 anyway, is simply saying that he will not extend any more grace periods. That now judgment is coming, as you have heard here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog from myself, the Lord's servant celestial, and now it's coming for real. So I continue, this is the will of the Lord. I will humble you and you won't be seated with the high players anymore. You will lose your place at the head of the table and another nation will rule over you in international relations and publicity. No matter what you do, America, the Russians will outshine you and win even the admiration and respect of your own people while you increasingly come under fire for the things you do and say both at home and abroad, you will come under censure, international reprimand and reproof, public, public disapproval, and eventually a disregard for anything you have to say or suggest. 
You will be publicly ridiculed in the press by way of cartoons and articles that will be heavily read and agreed with, op-ed pieces, poison pen letters. All this will be part of a very public fall from grace that you will be powerless to stop. You will be criticized by your own people and by Putin and other world leaders. Your ability to lead has been questioned once before, but never like this. This time it will be savage. This time it will be committed. This time it will be unanimous and you will no longer be seen as the friend of the world, but as a universal enemy that must be put in its place and eliminated. And so the Lord says that it is his will. When you hear God says, this is my will at the start of a sentence, then whatever else that comes after, you're not in any position to contest. You can't listen to the thing that comes after, this is my will, and then say, but why is it happening? Because it is the will of the Lord. God has created us as human beings with free will. That means that we are able to do whatever it is. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. You can kidnap a child and torture that child. You have free will to do that. It is heinous, it is evil, it is the work of Lucifer, but you are still allowed to do that because it is free will. For some reasons, Christians who should be the most learned in how free will operates always tend to act like children for the most part but why is God doing this because we have operated our free will in ways that are heinous and cannot be tolerated by God's justice because we are not taught about the justice of God doesn't mean that God doesn't have justice God doesn't have to wait for our education to catch up to his reality he is what he is. He cannot sit around saying, one day my people will get me. I will wait for them to get me before I move. No, the reality is that often God's people continue to act like he doesn't know, they don't know who he is. And then he moves and then all of a sudden they wake up. Then they have a perfect recall, total recall. They know who God is. They understand. They begin to cry out with perfect biblical accuracy. All of a sudden, they know how to read their Bible. All of a sudden, they know how to use Bible verses. 9-11 had the biggest atheists in church crying. Churches were packed wall to wall, standing room only. The nation was seeking God because the nation thought that other bombs were going to fall or other, other buildings were going to fall. Terror brings people back to the center. But in times of plenty, people have much to say. People become philosophers. This doesn't sound like God. Why would God do that? This is why I don't believe Christianity. You claim that God is love, but as if God is some one dimensional, a Rubik's cube with only one side that has only one color. And so this is the will of the Lord is an emphatic statement saying that everything you hear after that, that's exactly how I want it to go. So then it's very painful when you hear what happens and what follows, I will humble you. It's my will. You won't be seated with the high players anymore. The garbage can is going to tilt and shove you off down into the general pool. Even if you were elevated on a garbage can, it's still elevation after a sort. It's my will for you to fall. It's my will for you to be humbled. It's my will for you to lose your place at the head of the table. It's my will for another nation to rule over you in international relations and publicity. So now God has gone talking, gone from talking about how another nation will rule over us sovereignly, physically in war and military domination and might. And now he's saying that before that happens, you're going to be dominated in the international space. Russia's going to best you. He says, no matter what you do, America, the Russians will outshine you. So if it's time for military parade, America will do hers and then Russia will do hers. And then everyone, including Americans, will agree that Russians was, the Russians was nicer. The colors were better. The guys marched better. They just had more machismo. And did you see their buzz cuts? This is the thing that America hates the most because she wants to be the golden boy, the golden girl in the midst all the time. God is saying that I know how much you prefer yourself and I'm going to shift the spotlight from you to Russia. Russia is going to replace America as the darling of international relations. And we've already seen that happen. This is not a new prophecy. These prophecies are from 2019, 2020. The primary one that I always speak of here is called ascendancy. Ascendancy means to rise. And if we're talking about a balanced scale where America used to be at the top, Russia is going to start going up, which naturally means that America will have to start going down. 
Um, Russians will outshine you and they will win even the admiration and respect of your own people while you America will increasingly come under fire for the things you do and say even at home and abroad this is already in motion this is already in motion God reiterating that yes people will start to talk about America people will start to do spoof cartoons of America people will start to look at the American elections the Russians have made themselves tired the Italians have made themselves tired making TikToks about Joe Biden the entire four years, depicting him as somebody who comes to do a press conference. And the joke is that the, the, the podium is there and Biden walks into the frame and walks right past it. And then that's the TikTok and everybody laughs because everybody knows he doesn't even know he's supposed to stop at the podium to speak. This is, this is the commander in chief. This is the person that America chose to, to, to ride Air Force One. So they've made themselves tired doing that. The elections are there. Everybody's doing Trump. Everybody's doing Kamala. Everybody's dropping dance tunes. Every time Donald, says some, Donald Trump says something, it's a new bop on TikTok. This is not how a nation is held in view, right? In right and honorable view by other people. So these are things to consider that Americans are going to start admiring and respecting Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin's ways, Vladimir Putin's swag, Vladimir Putin's army, his international move and his protocols and everything and things like that. I've seen a lot of that in comment section on, on news articles where people say, you know, the way that he handles this, I wish that we could handle things like that. I've seen a lot of Americans saying, um, Mr. Putin, we're not actually with our government. A lot of people say that actually. We're not actually with our government. We hate them too and things like that. So international reprimand and reproof. This is basically, I spoke about this. Hmm. The name of the prophecy escapes me now. It's from 2021. It's called pushback and something in America where God was saying that the nations will rise up. They will find their voice. They will speak into the podiums. They will speak into the mics. God was just recently talking about the thin mic, how people will lean and talk into the thin mic and do mic drops on America, reprimand America, which is you should not have done this. People will say you should not have done this. And that's been happening for uh, a long time since the, um, the Israel thing broke out with Palestine. That has been happening at a very large level. But people will be speaking back. People will be speaking about us lgbtq policy they will be speaking out against many things that america does wrong showing public disapproval and eventually god says people will disregard anything that the american delegation has to say later on in this prophecy god says that you will be embarrassed so much that you will have to actually get up and leave the room you will actually see american delegates um they will try to make it look like a power move like we don't have to sit here and take it and they walk out the three of them but god says they will actually be burning up with shame because they are people and they will be physically feeling the hurt of being embarrassed in these very big and powerful rooms and the delegation will have to leave so he says people will write articles people will use cartoons people will write poison pen letters a poison pen letter is basically when an editor sits down and rips the country rips the leaders, rips the White House. Just the old editors used to write these powerful think pieces that would sometimes galvanize nations. Editor of Time Magazine, Newsweek, before they just became co-opted, corrupted, liberal sewers that only are capable of putting out one side of the narrative. Powerful publications in this nation are usually completely bought out and they're not able to objectively look at both sides of the American argument to bring out a balanced argument that will encourage the American people to think. Now it's just, we think this, you should think this, or you're a terrible human. We feel that, you should feel that, or you're a terrible human. And it's just so polarized and it's no good. Poison pen letter is when an editor sits down or an influential figure like a Noam Chomsky sits down and writes something that goes to the heart of the rot that is destroying America. And God says that those things will come as America tumbles down in a public fall from grace and it will become a unanimous point of view that America is a threat to the global order. God says you will be seen as a universal 
enemy that has to be put in its place and then eliminated. So it's not enough that they want you to be humble or they want you to have less of a voice as the United States. No, they will say, actually, we don't need this country at all. This is, this is very serious business because what business does any other country have to say, we don't need that country. But then when everybody agrees, we would be better off if this nation didn't exist, let's eliminate it. Then obviously the door is open for intrigue. It's open for plotting. It's open for war. So I continue, you will come under threat, espionage and terrorist acts. You will come under fire, pressure and international rejection. You will come under recrimination. You will be reminded of your crimes in an open forum many times, and you will have to leave the room to avoid the shame and the applause that will follow when world powers begin to stand up for themselves. This thing is sure to happen because the American punishment must include shame. It has to. She has shamed others, excluded them, isolated them, and destroyed them. Therefore, she must be shamed and excluded and isolated, estranged from all her friends and allies before she is eventually destroyed. Such is the road of a criminal. It is long and hard because it has been years in the making. No international court has found America guilty of war crimes. No charges have been brought against her for anything she has ever done. Hear the word of the Lord. Since no earthly court can judge you, I will judge you, says the Lord of hosts. Since no man can accuse you, I, who am not man, accuse you. Since no bench can find you guilty, therefore, the guilty verdict against you comes from on high. You are guilty. You are guilty. You are guilty. Three times I say, America, you are guilty and your crimes within and without your borders will not go unpunished by the Lord. So now God is talking about espionage threats and terrorist acts. You have heard that America is the number one terrorist of the world staging coups, staging wars, instigating conflicts, behind many things that will only come out when the people who were responsible for them in the eras of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even the 80s and the 90s, um, many countries were going through their independence stage in the, fort in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. Very tumultuous time politically internationally as many subjugated nations were fighting for independence were fighting for their right to be sovereign nations and um western powers basically wanted to have a hand in controlling who became what so they were very active in the scramble for africa very active in how the borders were set very active in wars of liberation that were fought in many parts of the world because they were afraid that the soviet influence which was very very active in those days would become the prevailing influence instead of the western capitalist mindset and so america meddled greatly america involved herself greatly america killed off a lot of opposition leaders and she killed off a lot of freedom fighters so that she could install fat cats who would do what she said for a bag and a fistful of dollars and so god says that that kind of involvement is going to come right back to america in the form of threats espionage and terrorist acts happening here at home so in addition to the fact that america does her own false flags 9 11 was a false flag boston bombing was a false flag um oklahoma bombing was a false flag these were all things that took place because of the americans government's need to frighten the people into compliance back in the day american people even if they were not lawyers doctors and um and accountants were a lot better educated about their civil rights, their legal rights, their liberties and law and things like that because TikTok and other distractions did not exist. Those people were hardworking. They were building up families. They wanted to know that the economy was robust and would serve them for generations to come. And so they actively took part in their civil duties as a citizenry. But then... The government finds it hard to operate with an informed citizenry. It needs dumber people who are distracted by bread and circuses. They want to watch power slap. They want to watch WWE. They want to watch 
um, mini series they want to watch naked survivor things like that and so you dumb them down by giving them entertainment entertainment and telling them trust us we'll take care of it and so people stopped paying attention and espionage was used inside the um inside the united states as a way to force the people to give up their rights so that the government could spy so that the government can do mind control so that the government can tighter regulate the things that favor them and then also under regulate the things that they want to abuse which is basically the financial system irs and money but god is saying that there's going to be espionage within america and terrorist acts that are perpetrated by people from outside so then how to tell the difference because america has a habit of bombing herself and then saying al-qaeda did it she has a habit of wanting to steal people's resources and then saying it was weapons of mass destruction so then how do you believe the boy that has traditionally cried not only wolf but dog man and wendigo how do you believe when espionage and terrorist acts come in to a nation that regularly bombs itself so that it can bleed it sacrifices the blood of its own citizens so that it can accede more power to itself well those things are still going to be happening god says there's going to be terrorism inside america obviously from dissidents who are well planted here and america is going to come under threats of that america is going to come under fire from the pressure of international rejection and recrimination recrimination is a very different type of accusation okay reproof disapproval public shaming reprimand that's all coming from the people against america recrimination is when america will try to stand up and speak into the thin microphone and say um, Iraq, you did this and Yemen, you did this and so, and so you did them. And then that person stands up and says, and what about you? Recrimination is basically when America will try to accuse and say, this person in Russia is going into the Caspian sea, even though it's the sea that belongs to her, it's not our sea, but China's going into the Taiwan sea and that's the sea that's next to her. And then these nations will speak up and then say, how's Hiroshima and Nakasagi, Nakasaki doing? Recrimination is when someone accuses you and you accuse them right back using facts of what they have also done. So that just goes to show the rise of a bolder era, which you have been hearing for some time here. And God says many times, even these African leaders have done it. The president of Ghana and the president of Burkina Faso have given America some solid burns on camera and other world leaders. So... God says that when the recrimination starts, basically America opens her mouth on someone in an international forum and that person has a whole notebook that they start reading from when it's their turn to reply, the American delegation will have to get up and leave the room. So America is going to be driven out of some rooms. America is going to have to leave some talks in a huff because she will be laying down, we want this and we're willing to do this and we're not willing to negotiate it. And the person will just say, and who are you? killers of babies and homosexuals who are you and then that's just going to knock the whole glass of water off the table tilt the equilibrium that america is not used to having unbalanced remember the cat on top of the falling trash can and yah says we're going to see america leaving rooms so it might not only be at the high level it might be american sports teams returning in shame if something happens here or walking out in a huff refusing to compete it will happen in different forums but he says that you'll have to leave to a, avoid shame and the applause that's going to follow when the different powers the different nations of the world start to stand up for themselves and he says that this will happen specifically because the judgment of america includes shame you will be ashamed of your brothels you will be ashamed of your towers in which you've trusted you'll be ashamed of the military you'll be ashamed of many things he says the punishment has to include shame because america has shamed others the punishment has to exclude us being excluded from things it has to include that so we have to be uninvited to certain summits i know the asean summit they usually have america there but i think they held one recently maybe last year or this year where pointedly they did not invite president biden they didn't want him there they just had their own asian thing which is very odd for them because they usually will want some kind of american face there some kind of american representation but they just had it all asia you know so exclusion has to happen america being locked out of certain rooms no longer invited to certain things isolation has to happen because cuba was isolated 
Nicaragua was isolated. Russia was isolated. Iran was isolated. Iraq was isolated. As a policy, America isolates nations so that she can basically starve them because when you cannot have international cooperation is lifeblood to nations. Nations don't eat cupcakes. Nations eat cooperation. They eat world trade. They eat friends and allies. That's how a nation stays robust by having friends, by having trade treaties. When you lock a nation out with sanctions, 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 and you're just so free with the sanctions. You don't even say three years of sanctions. You put sanctions on Zimbabwe for like two, three decades, that kind of thing. The United Kingdom and America did that. You just shackle a nation and consign people and the babies that they will have for 30 years, 30 automatic years to poverty. Those people are constantly, we're out here occasionally looking for cheap gas. The gas is there. We're just driving a little further to find the cheap gas. Those people are looking for the flour to make their bread the basic oil to fry their food, their basic needs. They're looking for money as in the physical currency. When they want to travel, they have to basically go on a scavenger hunt to look for physical bills because their system of money have, has been crushed. They're on B system money. They use P2P money exclusively. So when they want to go to America, when they want to go to the UK, they have to scrounge around for physical bills to have pounds in their hands, dollars in their hands. They're struggling for their daily life. And all it took was the stroke of an American pen, the stroke of a British pen to break an economy. You crush countries like that, God will crush you back. God takes account of everything. And the United States has done it to so many nations. It's just, it's just policy for us. It's casual policy for us, but it's lives. It's people crying out as their clinics and their hospitals don't have enough medicine. It's Cuba still having cars from the 1960s because America basically stifled the trade. That country is frozen in time. You can't do these things and think that if we're speaking of nations as people, that you will grow old and die peacefully on your bed with your children surrounding you. It's not possible. America's going to grow old. She's grown old and she will die with the sound of air raid sirens saying Russian cluster bombing incoming, run to your basement and your cellars if you have them. So God says, this is a road of a criminal. You're going to be shamed, excluded, isolated, and estranged from all your friends. When nations start to go radioactive, other nations that are not very powerful or other nations that don't really like war begin to see which way the wind is blowing and they tend to stop returning your call. They tend to keep their distance. And God is saying America has never faced any kind of international tribunal for her crimes. America has committed terrible atrocities around the world. Terrible, terrible, shaming, murderous invasions of people's countries in which there's no accurate tally of how many people this nation has killed. And so God says you were never accused of war crimes. Nobody ever brought charges against the United States for anything she's ever done. And so he says, no earthly courts can handle this case. And so I, Yah, will now handle the case no man has ever accused America openly of these war crimes. So God says, I am not a man and I now accuse you. No one's ever brought charges. And so now heavenly heaven brings charges. He says, no earthly court has ever judged you. And so I, the Lord of hosts will judge you. And I find you guilty. I find you guilty. I find you guilty. I say to you, America, three times you are guilty and I will judge the crimes you've committed inside the country, human trafficking, child pedophilia, ritual murders, the Satanism, the lust, the just the creation of online porn, for instance. Even that says, I will judge you for that. And your borders inside and outside, the sin inside the country and the sin you've done outside, it will not go unpunished by Yah. I continue. The headwinds are at full speed. Unleash them on her. Release them on her. Let the calamity start. Let her catastrophes pick up speed and frequency and be unleashed upon her. Let the localized troubles spread like rashes until they all meet in the middle like sores covering the body. Destroyed areas of illness 
of America's bodies will be her town and her, her towns and cities that will be destroyed by natural disasters. No relief agency will be able to adequately make amends for the destruction or meet the needs that will arise afterwards. And so God is saying now, this is something that he was saying even before I started writing. He was saying, the headwinds have built up against America. So the headwinds are that violent wind that I was talking about. Sometimes you read mythology and it talks about, oh, the winds will fall like a terror upon the person's head. And it was seen as a great judgment to fall upon a person suddenly by the gods. But here God was just showing me something like a whirlwind building up, building up until the wind was at full force. And then it suddenly was sent down with so much power upon the American continent. And he says that the winds have reached their full speed, the winds of judgment. There's a prophecy, the one that I did, um involving Tiffany Montgomery at the end, and it's called the winds of judgment are coming or the winds are coming. No, it's called the winds will blow. The winds will blow and God was saying that judgment is coming and that everything that can be shaken, this is a worldwide judgment, but focusing on America for the moment, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. If the stock market can be shaken, if your relationship can be shaken, if your ability to be able to pay your bills, if your ability to be able to keep your job, your ability to be able to keep your apartment, um, it will go all the way from a national shaking to a personal shaking where you feel, God, my life is rattling. Every single screw is falling out of my life. All the metal rivets are falling out of my life. My life is falling apart. God, please protect me. At least let me not be shaken out of your hand. Tie me in the hem of your garment, my Lord, and protect me. It's going to come to that level as this nation really begins to meet her calamities, which will be picking up speed and frequency. And this prophecy is filled with the judgment of flooding, flooding, flooding. And so because of that, more flooding expected across America, bringing more displaced people, more people who have lost their homes, more people who have lost their earthly possessions. All you have is your family and your dog. Some people won't even have their family or the dog. Floodwaters bringing devastation, happening more frequently. What is the prophecy called? Birth pains. It's talking about birth pains, breaking waters as birth pains. Thus says the Lord. That means by the Lord's authority, these things are being unleashed and they will come. He says, America is going to be covered with sores, but this is not a picture of physical sores. He says the sores will be when you look down drone footage and you see a smashed up Florida, you see a smashed up North Carolina, you see a smashed up Texas like that. It looks like eyesores, smashed homes, a burnt up Maui, a burnt up Wyoming, a burnt up California like that. When you look, he says, America will start to be patchy 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 with sores and the sores will spread and meet all over her body as you have one area here you have an earthquake here you have san francisco you have anaheim you have la then the whole side of the west coast is now looking like a destruction disaster zone and then it, it's like an outbreak of rashes on the west side of the nation's face that kind of thing it's not going to be happening one here and then all our eyes are on it it's going to be happening here and then here and the sores will happen with so much frequency that they will be close enough until the entire nation will start to look like she has a rash and he says that disaster relief agencies will be utter, utterly unable to make amends for the destruction. People will simply not get money back from the government, not get money back from insurance companies. And they, the, the government, the FEMA, CDC, diseases break out. You know, if you're having, if you're having dead bodies lying around unattended because the government simply isn't able to get enough volunteers or get enough FEMA people, maybe they don't want to bother to help or they just don't have enough manpower to help, then that's how you get diseases. When you have bodies exposed to the elements and then people have to come and handle them after a week or two, it's very dangerous if you don't have enough hazmat suits and things like that for people to use. And so the disaster relief agencies, God has always said that he will shame them, fire department, helicopter rescue, um, police department, first responders, EMS, um, you know, the paramedics, that kind of thing, hospitals. God says he's going to shame the frontline protection of the United States because the frequency 
and the hazardousness of the way things will happen. They will just not be able to cope. Tell them flood disasters. Floodwaters will rise over the American landscape and wash everything away. New Mexico will be hit by flooding again, and this time worse damage will occur. So New Mexico just recently had flooding um, concentrated in the area of Roswell, but it was quite widespread. And this, this flooding that is happening in America is very concerning because when you have enough water till the car is pointed nose down in the water and then floating along like a toy in a bathtub, that is a lot, lot, lot of water. And this water is moving with power. It's moving with surge force. And so it, that's how it's snatching people up. That's how it's snatching up people's homes and breaking them and busting them up. Many people may or may not know this. American homes are not built with concrete. They may have a solid foundation, but the house is just matchsticks. It's just insulation and some kind of fiberglass drywall. It's, it's not serious building. People build in Europe with some of those houses, those farmhouses and homes, they, they build with home, with stone, you know? Those people, their ancient societies, they built their floors with cobblestones. But you will hear in this prophecy that God says, when the farmhouse is destroyed, the only thing that's going to be left to prove that there was a house there was the cobblestone floor that the farmer's wife wanted. And he's like, that's all right, honey. I'll get you, uh, I'll get you some stone, stone floors. And he gets those stone floors decoratively. The entire house is not made of stone. These houses are, are built with wood. That's why when you see a hurricane go through, you look in an American disaster zone and it just looks like freshly made matchsticks. It's just wood. They're not built to last and they're definitely not built for the kind of storms, um, natural disasters and calamities that are on the way. And so he says the floodwaters are coming again to rise over the US landscape and start washing everything away. And New Mexico is going to get hit again with flooding and it will be worse. He said it will do worse damage than before. Next thing I wrote is keys. I hear keys because I kept hearing keys, keys, keys. The Florida keys are in for an uprising of flood waters, a judgment upon the region for the gross sin that happens there. And the one that God mentioned in particular is Key Largo in Florida. Very rich, affluent well-to-do area, old money there, I think, is what they have there. But generally, the Florida Keys, that whole area, God says the floodwaters are going to rise in that area to judge that area for the gross sin that happens there. And then this is where the prophecy began to shift and move. We're hearing about America. We're talking about America for this entire time. And then I just hear Brisbane, Australia. Brisbane. Australia, you are going to be flooded badly out of your homes, says the Lord. Also Canberra, this is the capital of Australia, C-A-N-B-R-R-A. -R -R I may not be saying it right, but then guys, I don't have your accent. Canberra will experience flash flooding as a result of the sin of that nation. And God says that the reason he's going to flood places like Brisbane, flood the people right out of their homes, so that's serious high-level flooding. And Canberra will experience flash flooding. This is sudden flooding. So you may not have to evacuate. It may just be sudden for two days or a day, and then the water will subside. Flash flooding is different from flooding where it floods up and it sits until they have, you have to leave. You have to leave. And he says that it's because of the sin of Australia that is not being addressed by the leaders, but instead Australia is turning sin into law. So this is definitely the rise of LGBTQ in Australia, definitely. Starting to have pride parades and things like that. Uh, maybe abortion, legalizing it if you're doing things like that. Those are the things that will always swiftly bring the wrath of God to a nation. When you legalize killing children, when you legalize third-term abortions, when you legalize... Um, homosexuality and then say that the homosexuals can adopt children, that kind of thing, swift on the back of that because the patience of God is no longer what it once was because we are now in the judgment era. I told you that once God puts on the robes of judgment, nobody is going to make him take them off until the judgments have been served. They will fulfill themselves and then you will always see in the Bible after the punishment, after the judgment, everything, then it will say, then they built an altar to the Lord and the Lord smelt the offering. And then his, what? His wrath was appeased. So no one is going to stop God from expressing the wrath that has been justly earned um, 
by the actions that we have, as humanity have taken. So Australia is going to face flooding in these two areas, Brisbane and Canberra. And God says it's because the sin of Australia, instead of the people striving against the sin, instead of the people rising up to protest the sin, the leaders are not addressing the rise of sin in the society, but he says that leaders are turning the sins into law. So this is something that we know for a fact happens here in America. America will find a new sin and then begin to protect the rights of that sin by saying love is love. America will find a new sin and begin to say, oh no, this is not a sexual deviancy. We're going to take it out of the, the register of mental illnesses. Pedophilia is no longer classified as a mental illness now. Uh, America's working hard to turn it into a sexual preference. And once it becomes a preference, then everyone has a right to defend preferences. So look out for that in the future. Key Largo in Florida will be flooded. And then God says Montego Bay in Jamaica will be flooded with a high death toll. Jamaica, the Lord Jesus says that you are doing too much sexual immorality and witchcraft, and you will be touched with floods as a punishment for doing wickedness in the footsteps of your ancestors. You will have to repent to make the hand of God move from on you. Yah says, as long as you continue doing witchcraft and rituals, he will continue flooding you. And the, Mont um, the Montego Bay area is only one of the many places in the Caribbean that he will wash with floods. But Jamaica especially, be warned. Yah says that he is not done with sending the hurricanes and floods your way yet because you are stubborn in your hearts against repentance. You think that everything is a joke, but it will not be a joke when there are people and even small children dead in the water. When you see small children, will you repent? Jamaica, do you need to see your children dead before you repent? And so you hear the Lord saying that floods are coming to Jamaica with the high death toll on the back of it. And that is because Jamaica is deep in sexual immorality. This is sleeping with people when you are not married. This is multiple sexual partners, whether you are married or not. This is homosexuality, man to man, homosexuality, woman to woman, bestiality. If it is there in secret, this is pedophilia touching people who are not yet ready for sex, very young children, but also those who are cuspers, people who are 14, 15, 16, but they're starting to go with people who are 29, 30, 40, that age, um, sexual immorality, and also witchcraft, conjuring, obia, hexes, voodoo, hoodoo, whatever you want to call it. You will be touched with floods as a punishment for doing this thing that is following in the footsteps of your ancestors. Israel is guilty of all these things historically, biblically, and God says it is wickedness that the descendants of the ancient Israelites are now still practicing in this age. And God says, when I put my hand on you, only repentance, group repentance from Jamaica and the general Caribbean area, mass repentance, he says, is the only thing that will make me withdraw my hand from you. So you hear the difference between, for instance, an American judgment and a Jamaican judgment. God says my hand is stretched out still when it comes to America, meaning nothing on this earth is going to remove the judgment of America from on America. The people in America who are repenting, you're repenting for your individual safety, the safety of your children. You're repenting so that the angels can say, child of God, check, child of God, check, child of God, check. You're repenting to get your name on the safety roster of the most high. You're not repenting for the judgment to lift off of America because the judgment on America is set. But Jamaica, God says that when I start hitting you with floods, when I start flooding you out and distressing you and washing you out of your homes because of how angry I am, that when you hear warning to Jamaica, repent Jamaica, prophetic word of Jamaica, whether it is an outside prophet like myself or the ones that God raises up in you, then he says you laugh. That's the time you, you take to clown people. That's the time you take to say it's funny and start speaking in your accent and mocking the people who are speaking for God. So he says, when I put my hand on you, you will have to cry out in repentance for me to take my hand off of you. And he said that it will go to the level of drowning the children. Children cannot swim in a flood. What do children know? They can barely float in a swimming pool. 
It's a controlled environment. You need to have five people watching there and clapping for them as they're getting started in their swimming journey. What are you going to do when the sea rises up over you islands? The sea is everywhere around you. Why are you proud? Are you not scared, Caribbean region? Do you not care about yourselves? As long as you keep doing witchcraft and rituals, God said that you will keep getting flooded out. You will keep getting flooded out. And he says that Montego Bay is just one of the many Caribbean areas that are going to catch it. I will wash them with floods, but Jamaica, you especially be warned because of your conduct. Yah says hurricanes and floods are going to be the judgment of Jamaica because their hearts are stubborn against repentance. Why would a man think that he is above repenting? You think everything is a joke, but it will not be a joke when you see children floating in the water. And then he says, do you need to see the children floating before you repent? Do you need to see your children dead before you repent? And as a time, at the time I was receiving this message from God, believe me, it was just surging. It was just surging. This prophecy was a challenge to capture because it was just coming up, coming up, and I was just trying to write it as fast as possible to capture everything. And then I continue. He says, anybody, anybody who refuses to repent, the Lord says, they will be judged with natural disasters in their country. The nations will be turned into hell, says Yah, and all who forget God. You are turned into hell when there are floods you cannot escape. Flood waters rushing dangerously past the watermark on the beaches that you are used to. The water will go far above that level, and when it is finished, it will leave a trail of disaster behind it. So serious that relief efforts will seem tiny and useless compared to what has happened. So, yeah, is basically talking about sea surge that's what we call it here in america that's the term for it but it's basically when the water levels of the sea when the sea becomes so full either because of rain or because of disturbances in the sea that the water level rises far beyond the beach this is a water disturbance the sea rushes in far 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 beyond the beach and god says this is going to become a common natural disasters in countries where there's no repentance you will be judged with natural disasters in any country that refuses to observe repentance. So you can see the, the problem of these prophecies is that you may be in your country, okay? You could be in, India is flooding right now. I've never seen this thing. The flood is reaching the level of a tree. Tall, tall tree, the leaves of the tree, the medium leaves of the tree are brown and the rest of the tree is in the water. Poland is flooding. France is flooding. This flooding is international and it seems to be ongoing and it seems to be relentless. And the problem is now the people, some people will come to the internet and hear the word of the Lord and they will believe it. And they will kneel down by their bed and they will begin to wash their robes and they will begin to confess of their sins. This does not equal natural, um, national repentance. National repentance is when you start to get the church leaders involved. America doesn't take, American church leaders don't take the word of the Lord seriously here. It is their new unpaid job to mock and talk about the woman with the towel on her head. But this towel is bringing powerful indictments of God. This towel is rocking this nation to its base. The towel has more power than the people doing mic drops. So this is the buffoonery that we have here. Church leaders in America do not take the living word of God on this ministry seriously. They see something to mock. In fact, they attempt to elevate themselves by having think pieces on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. And yet, when the TV goes on, it's never talking about what they've said. It's always talking about what I've said because the word of the Lord cannot be overturned. So you're in a nation and the, the leaders of the nation are not moved to take the word of the Lord seriously. This means that they will not begin to move within the church community to say, let us gather into our houses of worship. Let me liaise with bishop person here. Let me liaise with deacon person at the other ministry. Let's call our people into fasting and prayer. And then as the people of God begin to gather, taking the word of God seriously, humbling themselves and saying, oh God, unto us is the sin of us. And now as we have heard, the sin of our fathers 
as they begin to seek God now, humbling themselves, then the Lord pours out grace upon such a nation. And then one day you put the TV on and then you hear the, pa- the, the president of the nation saying, this and this nation is a godly nation. Next month, we are going to observe, instead of the armed forces day, we will observe a national day of prayer. When you see that kind of thing coming out of the mouth of a secular leader, then you know that God is extending an olive branch to you, that God can trouble the heart of Pharaoh in his palace and Pharaoh can rise up and begin to do Joseph activities. This is how you know there's a door opening now. There's a Nineveh corner. You're about to turn the corner. You're about to now see to it that the the disease that has broken out in the nation has been acknowledged by the highest heads. And this is because the lower heads, the church, has started to pray. The church may be the lower head visibly, but we are the higher head spiritually. But when you are in a nation of podcasters, then you're sunk. So other nations take a leaf. If you hear your prophecy and God says, you will have to do ABC for my hand to withdraw, immediately begin to liaise among yourselves. Begin to liaise in your white your WhatsApp groups. Begin to liaise on your Facebook chats. Start the prayers there. Those who have good relationship with your pastors, approach your pastors and say, Pastor, can we at least do this? Look at this. What do you think of this woman? You pray before you go to your pastor. Maybe your pastor is not an American buffoon. He's not an American podcaster. He's not America's celebrity influencer pastor or influencer conference haver. Then that person takes you seriously. Your church becomes one place you guys pray every Thursday. You mention your nation that, God, we don't want to drink floodwaters and we don't want our babies to drink it. Have mercy on us. We are guilty of our sin. And then before you know it, you share with other church members. They do the same. And then in Jamaica, you turn the ship. This one is already, it hasn't only hit the iceberg. It's it's under the ice already. We're just waiting to feel the chill of our judgment here in the United States, but it's not an absolute for anyone, for everyone else. And that's why God is saying anybody who refuses to repent. When you hear him say it from a negative standpoint, anybody who refuses, that means that many will not refuse. Many nations will not refuse to repent. They're going to have revival. Kenyans, if you could stop kissing Nephilim, if you could just stone Bradley back to where he came from, Bradley and Isaac, if you could let them go and stop sleeping with them, then the prophecy of God that you would have revival along with Pakistan and Bahrain would be fulfilled upon you. It's not absolutely a closed door. Just because God says that your president was going to revenge on you and he actually revenged on you, just because God says he was going to have a problem and bite off more than he could chew and it fulfilled this year, two years later, does not mean that you are consigned to the trash can, the falling trash can of judgment. You can still repent. If you hear the word of the Lord and you decide to turn, excuse me, please, and do righteously, then will God not forgive you? Will he continue to find fault with you forever? The door is not shut for anyone, for everyone. It's just shut for some people. So he says, anyone who refuses, in other words, do not be that. Do not be that one that gets ref- that refuses that nation and gets judged with natural disasters. Because Yah says he's going to turn many nations into hell. Have you seen refugee camps? America is starting to see camps. We can't be called refugees because we haven't fled into Mexico and Canada and surrounding regions yet. Civil war, not yet. External war invasion, not yet. But camps are definitely springing up because people are losing their homes. People are losing everything. They're having to go to disaster relief zones. And so when a nation is turned into hell, God says you won't escape the floods. The floods are going to rise dangerously past the normal sea level. And you do not want those things because he says when they finish, it'll leave a trail of disaster in their wake so bad that the relief efforts will seem like a little ant next to a mighty mountain of needs. How to get fresh water for everyone. How to get fresh water for everyone. How to get food for everyone. How to get sleeping cots for everyone. Jamaica, do you have enough money in the bank to handle that kind of thing? Does Haiti have enough money in the bank? Barbados, do you have enough money in the bank? Isn't it better to avoid the calamity than have to face 
after disaster relief that you can't handle. And so the next part of the prophecy concerns the nation of Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso, Yah says that you are being warned. You are being warned by Yah about the sins within you. The sins that are going unchecked in your midst because of your society. Yah says you will have flash flooding for the sin of the Burkina Bay have risen out of control. Burkina Bay are the names. That's the name of the people in Burkina Faso. Yah says, when you flood my land with your sodomy and divisive mind control, I will flood you with my waters that will rise up over you and trouble you until you fear for your life. Flash flooding in Burkina Faso will become a problem as they keep on sinning against the Lord. Now, there was something in this prophecy that really puzzled me, but I will get to it when I get to the bottom of it. So Burkina Faso is a nation that is in West Africa and West Africa was prophesied to in, it might be June or July of 2019, that there was going to be flooding all across that region. One nation I remember having floods, mentioned for floods is Nigeria was going to have floods. And God says that is because they have multiples of small gods that he called Guinea gods, derived from a phrase they have called Ogini, meaning what is it or what is that? God was basically saying these small totems, items, uh, small gods that you are worshiping in your ancestral religions, your native religions. What is that? What is that? He's asking compared to a God like me. He mentioned Ghana and said that he was going to hit Ghana with flooding again, which means that in Ghana's history, there must have been some kind of flooding before God brought that prophecy that he would hit them with fire, um, with flooding once more. And the nation of Mauritania was mentioned and God was speaking of flash flooding, sudden flooding that would just come. And Mauritania, I think, has a lot of salt pan areas. It's a kind of flat, deserty place, I think. And so Yah was saying that when the floods come there, they would be devastating as well. So West Africa was mentioned as a place where there is witchcraft, rituals, shedding of human blood and human sacrifice. And God says that he hates that. And this was also mentioned once again in the prophecy that is called the slavery chronicles part five. If you are any kind of the descendants, you need to go and watch that prophecy, the whole thing and understand how God says that the judgment came because of the love of the people for the wickedness of their forefathers. And so God is talking to Burkina Faso and saying that you're being warned about the rise of sins in you and the sins that he have mentioned that he says growing out of control is sodomy. Now this really shocked me because I thought, what? Sodomy? But God says, you are flooding my land with sodomy so I will flood you with my waters that will rise up over you and trouble you until you fear for your life in the form of flash flooding. Burkina Faso is a landlocked country, and so they don't have access to the sea for it to be sea-based flooding. So it's going to have to be heavy, 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 um, unconventional rains that eventually surge into flash floods that he says will make people fear for their lives. And he says, flash flooding, it's not one. He says, it's going to become a common problem as they keep on sinning against me. So brief research actually revealed to my shock that homosexuality is not illegal in Burkina Faso. It's, it's not outlawed. It's, it's legal. And this is very rare and different for an African nation to not have anything on the books that actually says that homosexual relationships, uh, homosexual unions are not blatantly outlawed from step one, which is how it usually is in most African countries, excepting of South Africa that actually has homosexuality in their constitution. That needs repentance. South Africa, that needs to be covered with the blood of Jesus. That needs severely asking for mercy because we all know who was involved in the creation of your constitution when you finally got your independence as the last baby nation to become free. That needs to be taken to the foot of the cross and the blood of Jesus pleaded over it for being so blind as to allow the usual suspects to get gay in your founding document. 
That's just food for thought. That is a serious um, reprimand that you need to take to the cross as a nation to repent of. But here, Burkina Faso doesn't have anything on the books that says it's illegal. In fact, the first time that they started discussing this was when the military um, junta took, took power, I think a year ago or two years ago. And now as of June, 2024, they started having discussions to completely outlaw homosexuality, but it hasn't yet been finalized as a law. It's just a bill in progress. And so God says, as long as there's sodomy, same to same man, same to same woman. And then he said, divisive mind control. And I was for a moment in my thoughts on this one, like, Lord, am I hearing you? Divisive mind control. And I finally decided to ask him, Lord, what is divisive mind control? And he says, they control the minds of the people with divisive policies that set them one against another, causing tension and conflict in a land that should be one. So Burkina Faso has Muslims, it has Christians, it has many different types of ethnic groups as well as religious groups. And it says online that they seem to live harmoniously and that they inter even intermarry, which is very rare, you know? Um, but God says, when he says they control, then it's definitely meaning it's coming from the leadership that would be, for instance, if the leadership starts to do nepotism and begins to choose all the government from one tribe and favor that tribe that the military comes from and they favor their tribe, they pick leaders and, and members of the parliament and they pick ministers from that tribe, then yes, it will definitely cause division among the people. And also regulatory policies, he says, are controlling the minds of the people. So it's causing tension and conflict and God says this is sinfulness. Government corruption and government nepotism and bribery and having a, a hand that is heavy on one part of the land because you don't come from that part. So you won't develop that part. You won't give them help. You won't give them medical assistance. You won't build their roads. You won't dig their wells. That is wickedness. That is unjust weights and measures. And God actually hates that in a country. So that is the prophecy for Burkina Faso. And then the Lord went back to America, and this is where we end and land for this message. America will have flooding as a regular occurrence, both in and out of season. This is in the rainy times when we can expect rain, and this is completely in times when we don't expect rain at all. And he says in this way, I will drive them from their home. And I will create many areas of wasteland and crisis as a sign to them that my judgment is at work bridges washed away, homes uprooted by hurricane winds, like in the fair, famous story, The Wizard of Oz, farmhouses broken down to the cobblestone flooring, which will be the only sign that a house once used to stand there. America will flood continually for the overflow of sin in the nation. This is the word of the Lord. And so you hear the prophecy of the Lord saying that the floods we are currently facing, and you can see that they're quite devastating, even to the taking of thousands of life, um, thousands of lives. God says it's not going to be a one-off as America continues entering into the ark and season of her judgment. God says floods will become a regular occurrence with us in and out of season. And many people are going to be driven from their homes. And I spoke at the first part, part one of this prophecy about how devastating it is, how depressing it is, how it opens up the mind to suicidal thoughts, depressive thoughts. When the human soul is low, the way that Satan will begin to hit you, he will begin to hit you. Look at you. You lost it all. Your life savings. You guys just finished paying off the house. You've lost it all. And now they refuse to give you a mortgage payout. They refuse to give you insurance payout. People... People killed themselves in the Great Depression for that kind of thing. For the loss of material things, their spirits became low and they just felt they couldn't live anymore. And they were jumping off of buildings at Wall Street and things like that. So being driven off of your home is a terrible judgment because we find so much comfort and identity in what we call home. And these floods are going to create wasteland areas. Wasteland areas. The government might just decide, you know what, we'll, we'll just... We'll just bulldoze the whole thing down. There was talk that they were planning to do that in some area. I'm not sure if that was ever done. But when the area becomes so devastating and there's so many bodies buried in the silt, in the mud, it's not a good place to live anymore. And they might just 
knock the whole thing down and declare it contaminated or something. And he says that this flooding will create wasteland areas and great national crisis. This thing is happening here and happening here and happening here on the American body. It will be a body in, in pain. It will be a body, a nation in pain, covered with sores. And he says that crisis, that crisis state that we're about to start living in, disaster zone life, is a sign that the, the Lord's judgment is at work. Yah says that bridges are going to wash away in this flooding. Homes are going to be rooted up by the hurricanes and fly away like in the Wizard of Oz. In the Wizard of Oz, a hurricane came and pulled Dorothy's house right off the ground and carried it and landed it somewhere else in the, in the land of Oz. And I spoke just briefly about how American homes are only the only the foundation and the stone foundation is is built of sturdy materials the rest of the house is just clapboard and timber and paint and insulation in the walls so it's not sturdy so homes just ripped off this tells you that the forces of hurricanes that are coming are serious just because the house is flimsy doesn't mean that it's not still a house so if a house can be lifted up, then a tree can be lifted up, a cow can be lifted up, a person can be lifted up. This is this is what how we should think, you know? So barns are going to come loose, and God says that the farmhouses that people have built will be completely smashed down until only the specialty floor, the stone floor that a woman, oh, you know, Mathis, I want a house with stone floors, and he gets it for his Thelma, and then... Devastation comes and only the stone floor will be able to withstand the hurricane force winds. And God says, expect continual flooding because sin continues to flood America. This is the word of the Lord. You have heard the prophetic word, part two, breaking waters as birth pains. Thus says the Lord, dated October the 28th, 2024. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bring sobriety into your faith. May the Lord bring sobriety into the faith of the American public. May the Lord bring wisdom, understanding, softer hearts and open ears into the American public so that people be can begin to gather their wits about them and begin to look in the word of God to see how did people surmount calamities they certainly did not surmount the calamities by breaking god's law and saying things like from isaiah chapter 9 verses 10 and 11 oh the sycamores have been cut down but we will plant cedars oh you know this has been broken down but we will rebuild with hewn stones we're going to build back better and we're going to be better than before and we're coming into a, a season of greatness we'll, we'll go through a few things stop listening to these false prophets stop listening to these people the lies that they're telling you are compromising your faith a little leaven leavens the whole lump they're not preparing you for the devastation that is ahead of us and therefore when the devastation comes those who have listened to the false prophets will not have the necessary preparation and the necessary layers of ballast which is something that keeps you grounded and weightedness just hearing the truth is god's mercy hearing the truth and knowing how bad it's going to be it's an extension there's a mercy in that it will not take you by surprise when you start to see russia growing out of hand china growing out of hand it will not shock you and put you in abject terror the way some people will be because you've heard the word of the lord to prepare these people can't prophesy to you the word of the lord is not in their mouth you can see it from the flip-flopping that they're doing about the election years ago it was just me saying that kamala harris was coming but now because they can see the inevitability inevitability of it the fact that she just barrel rolled over joe biden and came to stand in his place as you were told now they're saying things like if if we don't repent then kamala could do you think that god speaks like that god is unequivocal in his speech i've never come and told you if this happens then that could happen but if that this is the speculation of men why do you regard it as people why do you listen to it because of the hope in your heart that you don't want to be defeated so you're willing to take these outright lies and say oh it's also prophecy celestial you're not the only one prophesy no i've always stuck to my story because my story was actually shown to me by god in dreams not one dream many dreams 
I had five prophecies on this woman before she ever showed up when she was only laughing and cackling in the background. God was telling you that's your future president, but now she's in front of you in the cream pantsuit and now they have to pivot. Now they have to balance. Now they have to say something because they need to try and pretend that they, they prepared for this, that they also knew this was a contingency. They did not know they are liars. Why do you listen to them? They feed you false hope. They feed you the lies that come from their own souls. God would never say if this would happen. There's no ifs with God. God is emphatic. God says this will happen and he stands by his story. But these people are giving six scenarios because they want to ride coattails into glory when she wins. Then they will come out and they will say, well, you see, we didn't repent enough and that's why we didn't get Trump. But they had been telling you that it's Trump for all these years. Why are you not holding these people accountable? I absolutely will hold them accountable. I will hold them accountable in Jesus's name and he will hold you accountable for being like the people who frustrated Elijah on Mount Carmel. Why are you listening to the prophets of Baal when there is a real person in the land telling you, thus says the Lord, this will happen. And you are seeing it happen on your fellow Americans. You are seeing judgments of floods and natural disasters on your fellow Americans. When did these people ever tell you these things were coming? Since years ago. You tolerate them, you tolerate them, you tolerate the defilement that they bring into our midst. And when God begins judging them and judging those who tolerate them, don't cry out, do not cry out. Be stoic and bear it the same way you are joyfully bearing their lies now. God bless you. Please stop interacting with people that come to your inbox and ask you to give them money or come to your inbox and tell you that they're seeing things about you. The fact that they're using my ministry name, the fact that they're using my ministry picture, you need to be wiser than that. I have said here many times, it's not me. Please stop sending me email and asking me it's, it's, if it's me. I told you it's not me. It's never me. I never approach people for anything. I'm not approaching you to ask you to send money to an orphanage. You have to be smarter than this. You have to be more vigilant. You have to be wiser. If I'm sitting here in New York City, living a New York City person's life, how am I asking you to donate to an orphanage in Nigeria? How is that working? You give these scammers your financial information. They wipe your bank account clean. They pander to you. They tell you that they're seeing things and you're itching. You're itching to get a word from everyone. Watch out. These people don't curse you. Don't come here when they've cursed you to ask me and said, I thought it was you, Celestial. Because I warn every time. I'm not approaching you. I'm not in your inbox telling you anything about anything. Please stay away from scammers. To those of you who support and bless this ministry, may God thank you. May God return it to you in full. Please stop sending me gifts from Africa. I have asked repeatedly. PayPal does not work the same there as here. Those of you who do not listen, you are damaging my PayPal. Can you please stop? Thank you. I'm not refusing your heart. I see your heart and I thank you and God bless you for it. There's instructions under most of my videos. If you're not able to be obedient, please desist. Thank you and God bless you. And until I see you again, goodbye.